Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. While bringing in the great man himself, Dick Girardi, it is the 38th Breeders' Cup, more importantly, the 18th season that we will work together on Penn State basketball. Sorry, I know wow. at the moment you have priorities on the 38th Breeders' Cup, but... I do. Uh, this Friday and Saturday will be Breeders' Cup time, but looking forward to making the, the drive, Steve, for the first time since we walked out of the Jordan Center after the Big Ten tournament. Wait a yeah. second, the Big Ten tournament at the Jordan Center? Yeah. But that's where we were last <laughs> year for all the games. That's so, where we were for forward. every game, yes. Yeah, like, Looking forward to being in the Jordan Center for Youngstown State on Wednesday and then actually traveling to different venues uh, like we always did in the past. And we all understood what was going on last year. It was just the way of the world. Uh, hopefully we're back to more normal. Looking forward to Coach Shrews and the, the Penn State and seeing Johnny Harrow back, Seth Lundy. And, yeah, looking forward to hanging out with you. Now. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. And, uh, which then brings us to this, because uh, you're in Del Mar, uh, mm-hmm. so it's a little warmer than here. Uh, <laughs> and it's a point of emphasis that you already made to me earlier. Yeah, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's not like super warm out here, Steve. It's in the high 50s. Yeah. But yeah, we're plus 30 over you. And people that know the geography of Southern California, uh, Del Mar is located about 20 miles north of San Diego, mm-hmm. and it is right on the beach. Yep, uh, exactly. Um, a little north of La Jolla. Uh, so yeah, it's one of it's actually one of God's great creations. Yeah. Down here. Just like you sort of look around and you go, is this, is this real? But it is, and it's the Pacific, and it's uh, 14 horse races over two days, Friday and Saturday, with lots of money uh, on the line for the owners and lots of money on the line mm. for those who will be wagering on their horses. I'm surprised you would bring up the aspect of paper. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's interesting. When the Breeders' Cup was first uh, thought of by John Gaines, the great breeder in Kentucky, 40 years ago, it was they were going to finance it, Steve, by um, what's known as stallion seasons, and they would nominate their stallions. And each person who would nominate the stallion would pay one stallion fee to put into the pot for the person. And that worked for a while, but now it should be better known as the Betters Cup because yeah. it's the amount of money that's spent on these races that actually finances the purses. Uh, they haven't changed the name of it from Breeders' Cup to Betters Cup, but they should. Right, they should, exactly. Well, the centerpiece is always the classic. And this is a nine-horse race. I already predicted to you the horse you would go first. But <laughs> and I was right. <laughs> but I want to get to Medina Spirit. Uh, when I called you yesterday, you were just about to engage in a conversation with Mister Baffert, and you decided to keep the phone open so I could be <laughs> at least a fly on the wall for the conversation. Yes, it sir. was thoroughly intriguing. Uh, this is a man who's built a a deep reputation along the way. That reputation is um, there are people taking shots at it. How angry was the trainer yesterday? Yeah, I, I thought he was controlled, Steve, but you could tell he was really upset with what's happened since the Derby when Medina Spirit, uh, he revealed, it actually hasn't been uh, revealed officially yet by the Kentucky Racing Commission, but he revealed that the horse had tested positive for a therapeutic medication called betamethasone which is actually a legal medication to train horses with. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's just not legal to have in a horse's system on race day. Uh, It's not a performance enhancer. He's not Lance Armstrong. Uh, He's not the trainers, uh, Jason Service and George Navarro that got indicted with tons of others early in 2020. He's nothing like that. Uh, But the problem, all people see are headlines, which is uh, derby winner test positive. They're not going any farther. They only ask for what. So, yeah, he's been caught up in this legal morass, and more than that, a public relations mess 
since May, and at the beginning, he didn't particularly handle it very well. He said, look, the horse was never given the stuff. And then they realized it was actually an appointment that they'd given him for a skin rash, which was just sloppiness on the barn's part. Why they would do that, I have no idea. Um, and he'd had a couple of other similar kinds of incidents in the year prior, but all for, again, therapeutic medications that are legal. He just can't test on race day for them, and, and they can't be slightly over the normal threshold, that kind of stuff. So he's getting lumped in with the real cheaters, and he's not. Uh, but unfortunately, most people don't go beyond the headlines. So where does this horse fit in this race, in your opinion? Look, he should be in it. He deserves to be in it. I mean, he won the Derby fair and square. It wasn't because he had the bet of methadone. I right. talked to a single vet that suggests that's that anything to do with it. Uh, but eventually, he's probably going to get disqualified from the first money because it's just the rule is the rule. I mean, I get that. That's fine. Uh, he's just hoping to get his reputation back at this point. It's going to be difficult because most people don't listen to conversations like you and I are having. Right. Now, and that he, he and I had yesterday, um, standing out uh, in the Marquee Village there overlooking the racetrack at Delmar. So, yeah, I mean, look, he fit. He deserves to be in the race. I don't think it's his kind of race, Steve. Right. Remember the Derby, he went to the front, uh, he held off all the challengers. That's kind of how he runs his best race. I don't think that's going to happen Saturday. Nick's go is just inherently faster. So I think Medina Spirit is going to be chasing. He's going to be in a situation not dissimilar to the Preakness where he was just harassed, even though he made the lead. I just don't think it's going to be comfortable for him. I, I, look, he's had a great record. Bob's done a great job with him. I do not like him in the classic. I just think it's a bad service. All right, so let's get to the horse that you've liked a lot as time has gone. This is Doug O'Neill's horse, Hot Rod Charlie. Uh, Flavian Pratt on board. What is it about this horse that you've locked in on and you've liked for a period of time? So he's a two-way horse in a sport where that's really important. Some horses only run well, Nick's go being one of them, when they have things they're, where they're incredibly comfortable. Like Nick's go, if he doesn't make the lead on Saturday, he's not going to be anywhere. I think he's going to make the lead. I think he's got a real chance to win because of that. Right. But Hot Rod Charlie runs great if he's on the lead, but if he's a couple lengths back, he also runs great. You love two-way horses because they get the rider options, and they give you options if you've played it. You're not eliminated at the start if something happens. So I like that. I think you could make a case and that he was the best horse in the Derby. Uh, he had just a little bit of trouble in the first turn, ended up finishing third, and Medina Spirit had the better of the trips. Uh, I 100% will make the case he was the best horse in the Belmont because he got harassed the whole way on the lead. Essential quality is obviously in the Classic and he is the favorite for horse of the year right now along with his stable mate, Nick Sko. Got him at the end of the Belmont, but I thought in my mind, High Rod Charlie was the better horse that day given how the race was run. That he finished first in the Haskell, got disqualified. I watched him win the Pennsylvania Derby. It was awesome. It was the best race of his life. He comes in with the best speed figure in the race. Uh, I think he's getting better, Steve, as the year goes on, and I think he's going to deliver the performance of his life on Saturday, and I think he's going to win. Yeah, uh, and that's, you know, and the Kentucky Derby, you talk about the first turn, that's 20 horses. Correct. All right, yeah. this is nine, and instead of a mile and a half, it's a mile and a quarter. Do you th- correct do, do the fewer horses and the standard mile and a quarter distance figure to his favor? I mean, I, I think it, it, it he's fine with it. I think Nick's go is no problem. There are people right. who wonder if he'll go that far. I'm not one of those people. Essential quality is obviously proven right. at the distance, and look, essential quality's got the great best record in the race. I mean, he's, he's only lost one, right? In the Derby, he was fourth beat by a length, and he ran beautifully that day. He just got beat. Um, won the Belmont, won the Travers, won the Breeders' Cup last year. I mean, Nick's go won a Breeders' Cup race last year. He's won huge races all year long, the Pegasus World Cup. It, it's just, it's a fascinating race, because it, it's one of those three. Uh, I mean, there's right. other six other horses in a race. Dark Collector has, he's, he's a very nice horse. I just don't think he's this good. Yeah. There's a few others that have zero chance. Uh, so I think it just comes down to those three. It's three, four, and five are the numbers. Hot Rod's three, Central Quality four, and Nexco is five. Um, and I think it's going to be that, that you just got to figure out the right order. And I'm hoping that the three is the one in front of right. the Well, and the Brad Cox has the other two, and Louis Saez yeah. will ride Essential Quality, and Joel Rosario yeah. will ride Nexco. Nexco would yeah. be the horse that to the. Okay, I think 
the casual fan knows essential quality. Yeah. The casual fan knows Hot Rod Charlie, but might not yep. know Nick's Go. Is that fair? Correct. And what is it about Nick's Go that makes uh, him a five to two? Right. So Nick's Go is a, a pretty good two year old. Uh, several years ago, uh, back at Churchill at the Breeders Cup, he actually ran second in the Breeders Cup, um, and then 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 last year, it, it, and then he kind of just it, something went amiss for a while. And and then then he ran unbelievably well once Brad Cox got him. They changed trainers like midstream last year. So since then, Stevie's run seven races around two turns. He's won them all, and they're mm. all significant races. And he wins them all the same way. He just goes to the front, no big keep up. And it's the best style of horse racing. It's like it's like sports. It's like we talk about in the games all the time. Better to play from in front. Yep. In horse racing, it's gigantic because horses run best when they're comfortable. When, when, are, when are any of us more comfortable driving a car or doing anything else when there's not a lot of traffic? Horses are no different. That's why Nick's go is so effective. He's incredibly fast. He's fast at the beginning. He's fast at the end. And look, if he's, if he's out there by a couple of lengths, unimpeded on the backstretch, and you're watching the race, he's probably going to win. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but trust me, I'll have a few five threes to make sure yeah. <laughs> if I run right. Charlie one second, I will not. I will not be leaving Delmar with that because I mean, won the twenty one Whitney, right? So I mean, yeah, he uh, won the Pegasus World Cup. I yeah. mean, he's just he's just fast. Yeah, uh, and and Brad Cox is in a great spot because he's got two horses with incredible talent yep. that have totally different running styles. So if for some reason somebody does run with next go, or he gets tired, or whatever happens, he's got essential quality. It's like he's got a second wave coming, uh, and essential quality is really good. And I thought Hot Rod Charlie's last work on Saturday was phenomenal, and I thought Essential Qualities was even better on Sunday at Churchill. Uh, those are the two best works I saw in the race. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's going to be fun. I think we have a chance to have an epic epic finish in the stretch tomorrow night, NBC primetime at 8.40. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think everybody that that likes exciting sports and see. Wants to, wants to see a good competition. That's the race you're going to want to see. Of the other races, uh, which one sticks out to you? That you know, they're all going to be intriguing to you because you'll yep. you'll start sure. running. You'll ro- start running each one. But give me sure. give me two of them that you sit back and say the casual fan ought to take note. Yeah, probably the turf, which is the race right before the classic on Saturday. Yep. Uh, Tarnawa, the great filly who won the Breeders' Cup turf. Is back to defend her champ uh, championship. She won it last year at Keen when she just most recently finished second in the arc on this awful, like gooey, crazy racetrack. Uh, I, I I think she's worth seeing. I mean, she she might be the best grass horse in the world. So that's something to absolutely tune in for. She, she's trained by the Dermot Weld, the great Irish trainer, who doesn't come to the U.S. often, Steve, but he's the first ever European trainer to come and win a win a classic. He came back 20 years ago and won the Belmont Six with a horse called Go and Go. And they just, that European trainers just, they, they kind of opened the door for more of them to come to the U.S., not just with turf horses, but also with third horses. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And, and look, the two-year-old race on, on Friday is always worth seeing. Yeah, You got Corniche for Bob Baffert. Uh, you got Jack Christopher for Chad Brown, two of the powerhouse trainers in the country. They're going to be the two favorites, and if one of them wins, that's going to be your favorite as we head to 2022 for the Derby. So that that's the second to last race on uh, on Friday. All right. So tell us uh, how you want to play the classic because uh, you don't just go out and buy a ticket to win. <laughs> no. Yeah, I I think the way to play, Steve, for me, I'm going to have I'm going to have Hot Rod Charlie heavily over a central quality. I'm going to have Hot Rod Charlie heavily second behind Nick's go for all the reasons I just cited. Yep. And I will also have a little bit of Hot Rod Charlie sec- uh, first with Nick's go second. I think Nick's go is more likely to finish nowhere than second. Right. Unless he just gets caught in the last 50 yards, which could happen, but that's not a scenario you can really plan on. Um, and I will probably have a, some essential quality over Hot Rod Charlie's. Uh, so in that, basically, he's going to have to finish first or second, and I'll kind of wait to play what I think is the most likely. And I think the two most likely are Hot Rod Charlie over Essential Quality or Nick's Go over Hot Rod Charlie. 
So, given how the race is going to be run and the talent of the respective horses, um, but yeah, the one thing I definitely want to have is that I see Nick's go as I said out there cruising by two lengths on the backstretch. I do not want to just have Hot Rod Charlie first because Nick's go one hundred percent going to win that scenario. Right, exactly. So, in other words, for the fan out there, concentrate on three, four, five. Somewhere, in yeah. That, I mean, it's going to be it, yeah. this, the question is the order. The yeah. one I'm, the ones I'm not going to have are, are the two cox horses together. Not because that can't happen, but that's going to be the one the public is. That's the ones that are going to pay the least, right? Because they're going to be the two favorites. Um, and look, I'm a hot rod Charlie believer. He's the best, going to be the best price of the three of them. So I'm going to, I'm going to live. I'm going to live with Charlie. I've been living with him since the Derby. Finished third in the Derby, I bet him. Finished second in the Belmont, I bet him. Finished first in the Haskell, I bet him. I got DQ. Finished first in the PA Derby. I actually did not bet him because the price was so short. Right. Uh, but, yeah, it, I've been, it, he's had a, a phenomenal year. And he's not the only. So is Nesco Folley and so is Nick Scott. All three of them just had phenomenal 2020. Sir, enjoy Del Mar. Enjoy the opportunity to win significant paper. And I will see you next Wednesday night in the Jordan Center. Steve, I look forward to that for sure. We got, what do we have, 8.30 post time? 8.30, uh, 8.30 is when the ball goes in the air. You and I will enter the gate at 8. Very nice. I like it. We'll, come, we'll be coming out of the gate for the – did you say the 18th season? 18th season. Oh, my Lord. You, wow. you, you talk. I'll talk. You talk. Yeah. I'll talk again. That's how we started in Milwaukee, and we'll continue that tradition. <laughs> the <Jordan Center> on <laughs> <Wednesday>. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thanks, Steve.